cross-examination. Ma'am, you indicated to us that you did not believe that there were, this was stalking up to this point because, according to you, Mr. Alexander didn't take any um, reactive action, correct? Um, yes. Uh, and that would include, for example, a police report, right? Probably, yes. Uh, order of protection, something like that, correct? Could, could happen, yes. Telling a friend to help him, right? There's no indication of that, correct? Correct. Uh, so in your view, because there's nothing written down, there, this allegation is not supported, correct? Or, or none of these things have happened, so this allegation is not supported, correct? No, it's not just because he hasn't done those things. It's because of the continued contact between the two of them. All right. In this case, though, the defendant has made some allegations, for example, this, the physical abuse allegation, the pedophilia allegation. She didn't report it to anybody either, did she? No, and that she, tends to be she, different. Hold on. Okay. Correct? She didn't? No, she did not. She didn't tell anybody about it, correct? Correct. In fact, well, in fact, hold on. In fact, as a result, for example, of the alleged pedophilia, she continued to have contact with him by having intercourse that night on January 21st, 2008, didn't she? Not January 21st. So, you, so you're saying you do not believe that she had intercourse with him on January 21st, 2008? I don't have evidence that she had intercourse with him on this, the same night of the pedophilia? Sure. No, I don't have evidence of that. But she continued to have sexual intercourse with him thereafter, correct? Yes. So if we're talking about Mr. Alexander not taking any corrective action, and then you look at the fact that he continues to have contact with her, well then, if we're then looking, for example, at him, the allegation that he had hurt, she didn't report it. Well, she didn't go get any medical care, correct? Correct. She didn't tell anybody, correct? At some point, she told Matt McCartney it, some this, things. This happens in the beginning, in August of 2007, January of 2008. She didn't tell anybody, correct? I don't know when she told Mr. McCartney, uh, Mr. Martinez. Wouldn't that be important to know when she told Mr. McCartney? It was important to me to know that she had alleged or, or alluded to some things, but well, well, I didn't know the date. No, I well, know. in terms of having contact with Mr. Alexander, it would have been important to know, for example, if she told Mr. McCartney about this in June of 2008, wouldn't it? Because before that, she would have continued to have contact with Mr. Alexander, and that would have been something that you needed to consider, because that's what you told us that you do. She did tell him before June of 2008. She did continue to have contact with Mr. Alexander, right? She did, yes. And she continued to engage in sexual activities with Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes, she did. And not only that, she continued to take trips with Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes, she did. In fact, she even took trips with Mr. Alexander after supposedly finding in his um, telephone uh, many, many text messages where he was flirting with other women, correct? Yes, she's on the issue of Of the Right? Yes. And in fact, you indicated that she was able to review approximately six months of text messages, right? Correct. On his phone, correct? I don't know how many months, but yes, she reviewed text Long messages. Long period on his of time, phone. right? Yes. So what we're seeing here is that you're saying, I don't believe that there was stalking by the defendant on Mr. A Alexander because of these certain factors. Yet, even though the same factors are present on behalf of the defendant's conduct after the supposed physical abuse is present, you decide to believe her. Aren't you applying a different standard to the defendant's? Aren't you applying a different standard with regard to the defendant's conduct after the supposed abuse and Mr. Alexander's conduct after the supposed stalking? No, I'm applying a different standard to stalking behavior and to domestic violence behavior. So you are applying different standards, right? To do to do two different dynamics. And you're applying different standards because what? One involves a man and one involves a woman? No, not at all. Because one involves stalking and one involves domestic violence and and abuse, right? That's yes. what we're talking about. Well, exhibit 558, you see that word up there? What is that? Abuse. And 558, what's that word? Stalking. They're on the same sheet, aren't they? Yes, they are. 
And man, one of the things that this sheet talks about in terms of, if we're gonna look at stalking, it talks about exacerbating factors, right? Correct. And one of the exacerbating factors is the family of origin issues involving the perpetrator, correct? Correct. In this case, if Mr. Alexander is um, extremely afraid of the defendant because of her stalking behavior, if we then take a look at the defendant's family of origin issues, she did have family of origin issues, didn't she? The family of origin issues. Isn't it true that uh, you are familiar with the defendant's family of origin issues in this case, right? Correct. Uh, according to you, there were, yesterday you testified that there were many issues involving her father, right? Yes, there are numerous issues. And in fact, I think one of the things that you indicated was that her father was less than truthful, correct? That her father was less than truthful right. regarding? Regarding whatever it is that you testified yesterday. Are, are you talking about the tape? Isn't that when that issue about the father came up? Yes. Well, I, I, I wanted to be specific because I, I didn't know what you exactly and meant. And in fact, you didn't have, you gave us some attributes of the father. Why don't you tell us what those were again about how it was that you saw that he was negative toward the defendant in her upbringing? That during her childhood, he was, he made sexually inappropriate comments to her that uh, according to her grandparents, he was mean, and that may be why her mother was, that she was angry at her mother because he was mean, that her brother Carl testified that he was very impatient with his own children and he thought he got that from his father, that at one point he pushed her into a piece of furniture and knocked her out, that he was controlling with the mother. And additionally with regard to the mother, there were also some family of origin issues, correct? With the mother or with the father? With the mother. I don't know about family of origin issues with her mother. Well, she used to beat the defendant with a spoon. You know about that, right? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about her mother's family of origin. No, I'm talking about the defendant right now. Okay. As the perpetrator. That's what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, that the mother that the mother hit her child with a spoon and left welts. And she was abusive in, in other instances, correct? yelling and screaming at So her. if we're looking at this continuum of aggression and abuse, there are definitely family of origin issues involving the defendant, right? Correct. 
One of the things we were talking about, ma'am, uh, before we took the break was this issue uh, of the alleged pedophilia on January 21 of 2008, correct? Correct. And you and I had a discussion about that, correct? Correct. Isn't it true that you told me that you believed, or that based on your conversations from the defendant with the defendant, that she actually walked in on him while he was on the computer looking at these images of children, correct? Yes or no, did you tell we, me that? No, we actually cleared this up prior to this trial, Mr. Martinez, and I told you that I misspoke at that, at, I assumed it was a computer because kids use computers nowadays, and I made that assumption. It was an incorrect assumption, and I had already told you that, and I thought we cleared that up prior to the trial. Ma'am, isn't it true that we had an interview in November of 2012? Correct. And that was approximately one month before the trial started, correct? Correct. At that time, you indicated to me that based on what the defendant told you, that according to her, Mr. Alexander was watching the pornography on the computer when she walked in on him. Yes or no, did you tell me that? I misspoke, and I'm I clarified that. I'm not asking you that. if you misspoke, ma'am. She did not tell me that. I made an assumption. It was an incorrect assumption, and I cleared that up. She did not tell me that. I know you keep saying that. Isn't it true, though, that that's what you told me approximately one month before the trial started? Yes or no? Yes, I told you that. And not only did you tell me that on one occasion, you actually told it to me on three occasions during that interview, correct? Correct. And in fact, during that interview, there wasn't an indication that you weren't allowed to look at your notes, right? You were allowed to look at your notes, correct? I, I read my notes. I you, glanced at my notes, yes. You had your notes with you, correct? Correct. And the questioning when it was being done, if you needed to look at the notes, you were allowed to do that, weren't you? Yes, I was. And during this conversation, at no time were you told that there was any restriction on what it was that you could say about whatever it is that your investigation revealed, correct? Correct. So what we have here is you indicating now that what you did was either <coughs> changed your testimony, or what you're saying is that you were less than... The objection is to the characterization that she's somehow changing her testimony not true. Finish the question. That you your question, the objection is made. Okay. That you're changing your testimony, or somehow you were sloppy in your reporting to me, to the prosecutor. That's the objection. I misspoke to you, Mr. Martinez, and um, I don't think I'm sloppy. I think you're mischaracterizing that, but I think I made a mistake, which I think is actually possible in reviewing these cases. And, and ma'am, one of the things that you knew was that this was an important kind of conversation, right? You knew that it was not something where you could just, it was two friends sitting down and talking. You knew that, right? Correct. You were being paid for that, weren't you? Correct. And during that time, you, be you believed that it was important to be accurate with regard to what you were saying, right? Yes, I did. But you weren't accurate as to that point, correct? I was inaccurate. And you were inaccurate with regard to a number of other points, correct? Several points. So it just appears that, did you, did you actually take that seriously? That, ma'am, with regard to that, did you prepare for that interview? Yes, I did. And you reviewed your notes, right? Yes, I did. And even though you reviewed your notes, you still, on three occasions, told me that the defendant walked in on Mr. Alexander while he was viewing child pornography on a computer, right? Yes, and ma'am, as a you use that incident as to uh, formulate, if you will, or reach a, a decision in this case that there was some abuse here, right? I, it wouldn't have mattered if there were pictures. The pictures, the pictures were there, whether they were on the computer or they were on the bed, there were pictures, and that's what I used. I didn't just use the idea that I mischaracterized where the pictures were, but there were pictures, 
and that I didn't mischaracterize. You see that you've ever seen those pictures, ma'am? No, I have not. You've looked at the journal, haven't you? I've looked at the journal. The journal doesn't mention anything about this incident, does it? No, it does not. And yet, you you vindicated to us that this is something that you've used. These journals that something that you've used to reach your opinion in this case, right? Yes. Let's take a look, for example, at the entry of January 24th of 2008. This is exhibit number 456. You see what it, the first sentence says? Yes. What does it say? I haven't written because there has been nothing noteworthy to report. So, according to this report, this issue of child, or alleged child uh, pornography wasn't noteworthy, right? It was part of the promise not to write negative things, specific things. So, in when it to her benefit, she doesn't write it because it's part of this secret, correct? I don't think just when it's to her benefit. Well, with regard to all of these journals that are here, you want to go behind what's in the written word, don't you? I'm not sure what you mean. Well, the written word here says, I haven't written because there has been nothing noteworthy to report, right? Right. What you're saying is, is that you are taking these words and interpreting them to mean that something noteworthy did happen before January 24th of 2008. That's what you're telling us, right? Yes, I guess I am. And you're doing that even though you have no corroboration of that, do you? Other than the defendant's word. I have no corroboration other than things that are mentioned in the sex tape that would, you know. Other than the defendant's word, you really don't have anything that corroborates <laughs> this, do you? That corroborates this allegation of child pornography, do you? No, I do not. Yet you still chose to believe it, though, didn't you? What I chose to believe was that there was domestic violence. No, I'm not asking about domestic violence. I'm asking very specific questions about an incident that, that is claimed to have occurred on January 21 of 2008. If we could restrict our question and answer to that. With regard to that, you chose to believe that incident, and you, however it was that you went about it, assumed, not assumed, based on whatever it is that you did, you found that to be truthful, correct? I found the kicking incident to be truthful. I did not, I'm not an expert on child pornography. I'm not an expert on sex addiction. I don't, you know, I, I don't do that. But I took that into account, as I took into account that when I saw Miss Arias, she had a broken finger. Do you, do you believe, based on this, that there was an incident? I believe there was an incident, yes. Involving child pornography, right? Where that was part of it. You do, you do believe that, per the defendant's report, that Mr. Alexander was found masturbating to images of children on January 21 of 2008. You believe that? I believe it. And you believe it even though there's no report about it, right? Yes. And you believe it even though the defendant herself at a time when this incident allegedly happened, writes that nothing noteworthy to report. You believe it anyway, right? I believe it based on the other no, th no. materials I've I'm read. asking about this. Isn't it true that you believe it even though it's, that's what's written there, correct? I believe it because there's a... There's an objection. There is more to this journal entry than just what the prosecutor is showing the witness. Overall. Can you continue with your response? Go ahead. I believe what I believe because I have looked at so much information and so much collateral data, much of which is in Mr. Alexander's own words. That's why I believe that there was domestic violence. That's what I was retained to look at. Was there domestic violence in this situation? And I'm being asked to stray from that but the truth is, what I believe is that there's domestic violence. 
And that's what I, I'm here to talk about. I'm not here to talk about child pornography. I'm not here to talk about lots of other things, Mr. Martinez. I'm here to talk about what I know something about. And that's really what I want to convey to people, not something that I have peripheral knowledge of. And all of the documentation that you re reviewed, keeping out the defendant's statement, is there any indication whatsoever that Mr. Alexander was involved in this January 21, 2008 incident of child pornography? Is there a reason to believe from IMs or from her journal? From anything. Point out to me something in the record that says, for example, for Mr. Alexander, I did this, or I didn't. I did this, I did, I did it he on this He talks about corking a little girl in the he sex talks tape. About, wh wh when, where does he talk about corking a little girl, ma'am? In the sex tape, he talks it about, is, uh, hold on. He talks about her having an orgasm. May I, hold, may, may I stop you there? Yeah. The sex tape that you're talking about, corking a little girl, is the one on May 10th of 2008. Okay, correct? Is that correct. what we're talking about? Correct. Where else does he talk about? There is talking about in that sex tape of having right. an orgasm like a little girl. Right, okay. What else? There is talk about um, on her drive to meet with him uh, does, uh, that she's getting her Spider Man underpants together and, and does he let, want her to have braids or well, ponytails? Let, well, let me, let me talk to you about the Spider Man underwear. Uh, do you know who Cameron Diaz is? Yes, I do. Do you? know whether or not Mr. Alexander was very taken with Cameron Diaz. That's actually no. relevant. Oh. Girl, to me, answer. Do you know that, whether or not? No, I don't. Do you know whether or not she was wearing any Spider-Man underwear in a movie called Charlie's Angels? No, I don't. So you really don't know why Mr. Alexander may have been interested in Spider-Man underwear, do you? No, I don't. And in fact, of all the things that you've told us, so far there's no indication at all that he's interested in any little boys, right? No. And the allegation by the defendant is that it involved little boys, right? Yes. After that, you indicate that on the next day after that is that there's this incident, supposedly, where there's physical violence inflicted upon the defendant, correct? Correct. Is that the second incident? We've talked about one. Is that the second incident? Yes, it is. When is the third incident? Or the, the fourth? The third incident is uh, in March of 2008 when they are discussing her moving to Wairika. And then the fourth incident is when, ma'am? The fourth incident is in April. And ma'am, looking at all of those four incidents taken together, is there anywhere in the journals that you have seen where there's any indication whatsoever that Mr. Alexander has physically hurt the defendant? Just in general. Not in general, I'm talking about specifically on those dates that you now have. Specific to the dates? Yes. No. And is there any indication of any medical reports anywhere? No, there is not. Are there any police reports anywhere? No, there is not. Even, you do, even though you don't have any of that and all you have is the defendant's words, you've decided to go ahead and adopt the defendant's version of events even though all you have is her word, correct? Most of the time you have nothing more than somebody's words and collaborative data because most women don't report. And with regard to stalking, all you have right now is Mr. Alexander's word and the corroborative data that we talked about previously uh, this morning, right? I have corroborative data that does, that's counterintuitive to, to talking, I mean to stalking. And that the thing that's counterintuitive to the stalking is the fact that he continued to have contact with her, right? That he continues to have ongoing contact, initiate it. Right. Per, yes. And it's the same for her that she even, after the supposed incident of pedophilia occurs, she continues to have contact with him, including sexual intercourse, correct? Correct. And so his conduct is being judged by the same standard, though, according to you, right? I, I repeated before that stalking behavior is different than domestically violent behavior when you look at the context, and that stalking can be part, but the worst kinds 
of domestic violence, which is what you're looking at in terrorism, that kind of stalking behavior, I don't see in either Mr. Alexander or in Ms. Arias. I, I don't see a pattern of that kind of stalking with either of them, that either of them are stalking the other. With regard to sexual humiliation and degradation, that's another one of the factors that's listed under terrorism, correct? Correct. And you're familiar with the um, May 26, 2008 instant message, correct? Correct. In it, Mr. Alexander indicates that he's upset with the defendant because he's nothing more than a dildo with a heartbeat, right? Correct. Doesn't that seem to indicate that Mr. Alexander doesn't view his role as a pot in having sex with the defendant in a very positive light? Well, there's a lot more to that email. Well, or that I'm email. not asking you a lot more of the email. We could talk, there's a lot more text messages, there's a lot more um, journal entries. I want to talk about that message and that statement specifically. Do you understand me when I say that? Yes. It Doesn't that statement indicate that Mr. Alexander feels that he's being somewhat degraded to the point that he's nothing more than a dildo, right? Objection, speculation is what Mr. Alexander thought. Sustained. Well, he does say that he is nothing more than a dildo, right, with a heartbeat. He does say that. In your assessment of things, because you are assessing things, for that's not a good thing, is it? No, it's not. So that conceivably could fit here under sexual humiliation and degradation if you were conducting this examination to view whether or not the defendant is the abuser in this case. I would look at patterns and I don't see patterns. I I'm see him in a rant when he is very angry talking about that. I've never seen that mentioned in any of the other information I've looked at. I've never seen him describe that. And in fact, unfortunately, he is acting in a sexual way that would allow him, with other women with his phone sex, to allow him to feel that way. And bottom line, that is not a good thing in terms of this being a dildo with a heartbeat, right? No, it would not be a good thing. Judge, may we approach for a minute, please? Yes.
You may continue. Ma'am, um, this 558 also indicates that generally, um, is that more? Is that what the word is there? Can you take I'm, a look at it? Is that more? I'm not sure where you're pointing to. This word right here. Oh, more. Uh -huh. Why don't we look at this exhibit 614? What does that say? Generally more regular physical abuse, but may occur without physical. So when we're talking about this terrorism and the stalking, is that there doesn't have to be any physical abuse, correct? Correct. And there's no allegation here, at least, that we know of that the defendant ever uh, physically abused Mr. Alexander, correct? Correct. The other thing that we have here, though, is this insidious or psychological abuse, don't we? Yes. And that can be done by words, right? Correct. It can be done by action, correct? Correct. It can be done by things such as being manipulative with an individual, couldn't it? If there's a pattern. Right. And if an individual is manipulated over time, then that has a tendency, if you will, to create this psychological abuse, right? Uh, it, it in could. a context, in, in a context of other things. Right. But. And you indicated previously that with regard to meeting or finding that there's terrorism, that you don't have to find all of the factors here, correct? You only have to find some of them, right? And. I don't, I didn't find terrorism. I didn't say that you found or didn't find terrorism. I'm saying that in order to make the assessment as to whether or not there's terrorism, you don't have to meet every one of these eight factors, correct? And there may be things that are not listed also. So the answer is yes, you, the answer is you do not need to find all eight factors, correct? No. And so if in this case, if we were to find that this, there was the stalking, and that uh, Mr. Alexander was extremely afraid of the defendant because of that stalking. And then if we find that there was psychological abuse on her part, and then we also find that we don't need to find physical abuse, but that there was a sexual humiliation and degradation, and then if we couple that with Exhibit 558, and we talk about the family of origin issues, it does appear that the person who was the perpetrator, the abuser in this relationship was the defendant, right? Not at all. Not in your assessment, right? Not in my assessment. I think we need to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be taking recess at this time. Please be back in the designated area at 125. We will start promptly at 130. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. We are at recess in chambers.